how do I usually start these? Um, what's up? <laughs> That's not it. Well, the gang's all here. Uh, actually, that's not even close to the horde of stuffed animals I have. It's just the select few lucky ones that I've chosen to represent this video, which is gonna be a super nerdy, awesome time. If you don't know me, my name's Amanda, and I only have half a face. Just kidding, <laughs> gotcha. So some of you may know this, but if you don't, I am actually a huge animal nerd to the point where I studied zoology in college and I am a wildlife conservationist, like for real, as a day job. I work with super endangered species of frogs and salamanders, as well as lots of reptiles. I've worked with tons of marine animals, both at an aquarium and on the ocean. I have gone and studied wildlife in the Amazon rainforest. It sounds made up, but it's not. And I figured it's probably my, my duty to make this video. It's probably something that I was always meant to do. So basically what we're gonna do is I've compiled a list of Animal Crossing characters that are actually modeled after super specific species that a lot of them, you know, are, are like deep cuts. I'm like, whoa, Animal Crossing, this is, this is obscure. Wow, Miss Animal Crossing over here being edgy. I love it. I find it really fascinating and uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. First on my list, of course, this is an African painted dog, an African wild dog. They have a couple different names. I usually tend to call them African painted dogs because I think that sounds really cute. They are amazing. And an African painted dog is what my favorite villager, Kyle the Wolf, is actually based on. They also do call them African painted wolves sometimes. And so that's probably where Animal Crossing got the inspiration by seeing like, oh, this is an animal that is called a wolf, even though they're not a wolf. They're technically their own thing. They are obviously from Africa. And they are actually, probably, technically, the most successful predator on Earth. Four out of five of their hunts is successful, which is astronomical. Astronomical for a predator, because predators, they have so many misses, most of them. Lions, even cheetahs. Whereas these guys, they nail it almost every time. They're incredibly fast. They actually are known for their thing that they do, where they eat their prey alive. They just start digging in. And so with the hunting, they're incredibly smart, they're crafty, they're conniving, they work together as a team. And there has actually been so many scientists that have gone to Africa to study these guys, and they have literally seen antelopes choose between going into the water where they know the painted dogs won't follow them. They know they're gonna get eaten by a crocodile, but they would rather go and get eaten by a crocodile in the water than get eaten by one of these guys because they're that savage, it's amazing. Um, but my favorite thing about them is that even though they're these amazing predators, they actually are one of the most social canids on earth. And canids are known to be extremely social. You know, you got wolves and the wolf packs and obviously dogs are incredibly social animals. But these guys take it to the next level. They take the food back to the pack and they actually will let the pups eat first as well as the sick and the old dogs in the pack. I just think that's so sweet. They really take care of each other and it's beautiful and it's a very, very strong bond that even though, you know, wolves and other canids have really strong bonds, there's nothing that comes close to the way that African painted dogs do it and I just love it. The African wild dog is also highly endangered. Unfortunately, they've been on the endangered species list since 1990 and their numbers have continued to drop drastically. So most of the problem is habitat loss and fragmentation as well as just people being afraid of them and killing them. Thankfully, there are a lot of great conservation efforts in practice, but they're uh, definitely an important species to know about and to, you know, be aware of because they they could always use our help. I figured it would be ironic and weird and awkward to talk about Bo next. As much as I adore and love Bo, Bo is an antelope, which is the absolute favorite food of the African wild dog. Awkward, but also not awkward because although the African painted dog used to range like basically all across sub-Saharan Africa nowadays and for the last at least 
two decades, the African wild dogs range has been significantly reduced. And right now, the African wild dog and the type, the specific type of antelope that Bo, our boy Bo is, because there are 91 species of antelope. So there are quite a few little antelopes in the Animal Crossing world. And Bo, he is a cob antelope. And cob antelopes and African wild dogs don't actually intersect, to my knowledge. However, it's still it's still ironic to say the least. Like if they're friends, like if anybody has Bo and Kyle on their island, send me pictures of them together. It's the fox and the hound. So the interesting thing about the cob antelopes, as well as many species of antelope, is that they eat for around 16 hours a day, which like same but also you know that that's what Bo is is that's Bo's goal in life you know if you, if you know Bo you know that he would absolutely eat for 16 hours in a day and we love that for him so I figured this next one we'll do an NPC and not only will we do a NPC but we'll do the NPC Tom Nook himself so we always refer to Tom Nook as a raccoon but he's actually a tanuki which is not a raccoon they're uh they're sometimes called a raccoon dog because they do kind of look like a raccoon and a dog if like a raccoon and a dog got meshed together by Nina's dad but they are actually a type of of canid they're very prominent in Japanese folklore they're often described as being mischievous they're shapeshifters a lot of the time they're like swindlers so Remind you of anybody? That old bag of bones. So next on the list, we have one of my favorites and one of the most obvious, I think, uh, creatures that everybody can kind of see is clearly supposed to be a little bit more, a little bit more of a specific species. And that is our dear Boone. And Boone, he has this beautiful face and that is the beautiful face of none other than the mandrill. A lot of people think that Boone's name is Boone because it's Baboon. But he's not a baboon. He's a, he's a mandrel. A lot of people do get them mixed up, but baboons, they've got this wonderful hair. I just love a baboon. Another famous mandrel is Rafiki. Rafiki's a mandrel, so that's how you know that they're great. So you can trust Boone, you know? I just love Boone. Can't get enough of that mandrel. Next, we have a girl that is very dear and near to my heart, if you know my channel. We have Miss Blanche here. I figured we would uh, dive into the birds. So Miss Blanche, although she is an ostrich... She's not an ostrich. She calls herself an ostrich, but she ain't. Don't let her fool you. She is a tundra swan. So obviously it makes perfect sense. If you've been considering Blanche a ostrich up until this point, and then you're just finding out that she's actually a swan, I'm sure that a lot of pieces are clicking in your head right now. She's of course a beautiful swan. They're sophisticated, they're gorgeous, they're amazing. And they can even survive in the tundra, which is pretty cool. Next is a character that is very dear to my heart. I've been saying this about everyone, but this one hits a little closer to home. And it is, of course, our boy Rattle. Now, Rattle is, it can be confusing for, for newcomers, for sure. There's a lot going on here, a lot to unpack here, but I think most people know what Rattle's deal is. He's a poison frog, of course. He is actually a bumblebee poison frog, which is a species that I work with significantly. I breed them, I raise them from little tadpoles. I work at a, an amazing conservation organization called the Amphibian Foundation, where we work with lots of really rare and endangered species of amphibians. Amphibians right now are one of the most in trouble types of animals, just groups of animals in general in the world. There's a global amphibian crisis going on right now. So Mr. Rattle and his friends are having a tough go of it, but Rattle is so cute. I love everything about his design. Not only is he obviously a bumblebee poison frog, but he has got his little mask on. He's got his little doctor thing because he's poison. So it's just adorable. I love Rattle. Bless, bless Rattle forever. So I'm about to tell you what we're not going to do. Okay. And you're going to look me in the eyes while I tell you this. We're not going to come for Antonio. Okay. Because Antonio is my boy. Antonio is baby. A lot of people misinterpret Antonio's design. He doesn't have a neck beard. He doesn't have chest hair. He is a loud and proud and beautiful giant anteater the classic anteater. So yeah, we got the anteaters. They're like a whole group, but a lot of those anteaters, they're creative projects. Antonio is the classic, the OG. He is a giant anteater. These animals are one of my absolute favorites. They're so, they just, there's only enough room in their brain for ants, basically. They're just these lumbering, big, goofy animals 
right? They, they just charge through the forest. They don't have very good eyesight. So a lot of people who I know who have worked in the Amazon for a long time have said that they've just been walking through and all of a sudden they just see a giant anteater like on the pursuit of, of ants. And it'll just like breeze right by them and they got to like get out of the way because it's like they're just, you know, they're always thinking about ants, you know? If they're not thinking about ants, they might be thinking about their baby because the cutest thing in the world is that giant anteaters will carry their baby on their back for up to two years. I think that's like the cutest thing ever to ever exist. So anteaters, especially giant anteaters, are, they're untouchable. Don't come for Antonio. He's a big giant anteater and all he cares about is ants. He doesn't need your criticism, okay? He's looking for ants. If you don't have ants for him, you're wasting his time. Speaking of animals that I love, animals from the Amazon rainforest and animals in Animal Crossing that get a lot of misdirected hate, in my opinion. Miss Luna, Queen Luna. <laughs> I hear people coming for her and I'm like, what are you doing? Be careful who you make fun of in high school, okay? Because Luna is actually a lowland taper, okay? I bet you didn't know that before you judged her. She's a lowland taper. Tapers are one of my absolute favorite animals. I'm probably going to say that about 90% of the animals I talk about, but tapers are just so cute. There's a few different species of taper. I actually have one right here. Damn it. Sick. Love it. Gotta love it. I'll get you in a minute. This is not a lowland taper. It's a Malaysian taper. You can tell because he's got this little, he's got this little white grayish half side. The lowland tapers are like all brown. This is a Malaysian taper, but I love him because I just love tapers. Oh my God, ditto Jolteon, you're always ruining everything. Come on. Anyway, lowland tapers are adorable. They're the little gardeners of the forest because they go around and they eat all of these plants and all of these fruit that have really hard shelled seeds that have a low germination rate, right? And they'll walk all around. They have this big wide range. They go and they find all the fruit with their little nose. So cute. And then they poop out the seeds and the seeds actually will survive through their digestive system. And when they are digested, their germination rate goes up significantly and they plant the entire rainforest, okay? So they're the gardeners of the entire Amazon rainforest. So show some respect. And to boot, they have the cutest babies of any animal ever. Look at the baby taper. Look at this baby taper and tell him that Luna's weird looking, okay? Because Luna is this baby taper. This is Luna when she was a baby, okay? So think before you, before you act. Moving right along to Tex. I have a very special place in my heart for Tex, even though he is, he's dangerous, ladies. And I think we all know that Tex is dangerous in the game. He's a dangerous man. But in real life, he is actually based on the beloved African penguin. African penguins are definitely one of my favorites. Again, I say that about every animal, but I actually do have a little bit of experience with African penguins. I worked in an aquarium where we had a very large group of African penguins and I got to know every single one of them very personally. And they are a critically endangered species, one of the most endangered species of penguins on earth. And they're just, they're full of personality. Gotta love them. They get these little pink, like little spots around their eyes. So cute. <laughs> I could just die. Uh, and I love them. They're also called, which is appropriate, as much as I love Tex, again, another name for the African penguin is the jackass penguin, straight up, because they're horrible people. I'm just kidding. It's because they sound like a donkey. They make this like braying sound. It's like, that was really stupid. It's also one o'clock in the morning. I could have been a lot louder and it would have probably been more accurate, but it also would have been very jarring and scary for you. So that's what they sound like when they are doing their penguin noise. But obviously that sounds like a donkey. And I don't know why they couldn't just call him the donkey penguin. I guess they used, I don't know why they call donkeys jackasses because donkeys are the nicest people I've ever met. So I, I am personally offended by that. However, I think that when you apply it to Tex, and again, I'm saying this as a lover of Tex. Tex is one of my faves, but he's a jackass. He's a little bit of a jackass. He can be. So it's perfect. It's appropriate. But yes, Tex is a beautiful African penguin. And we love him. We love to hate him. We either love him or we love to hate him. Uh, next is another favorite. It's another jackass. It's Zell. And I say that 
so lovingly. I love Zell so much that I'm actually starting to consider the fact that I might need Zell to come to my island. Like, I love him so much. I feel like he needs to come so he can be in the band with Kyle. That's It's only right. Kyle needs a best friend. And he needs a best man for our wedding. So Zell might just be that man. But Zell is another one of your antelopes. Again, there are 91 species of antelope. So Animal Crossing really went in. And not only did they go in on the antelopes, you know, there's a few antelopes people can can name right off the top of the head. You know, you got your, your pronghorns and your gazelles. Gazelle, hmm, you would think that Zell would be a gazelle, right? You would think, you would think. But Animal Crossing, they are a quirky, quirky little bitch because they actually went and named this antelope Zell, even though he is actually a black buck antelope. He's a black buck antelope. Look up a gazelle and then look at the black buck antelope and you will see that the black buck antelope is Zell. He's got the curly horns. He's got the really cool markings on his face. That's Zell. So Zell is definitely a very specific species and you can tell right away as soon as you see him that he is not like the other boys. He is definitely doing his own thing and we love to see it. And I just, I have a very special place in my heart for Zell. I love the way that he like ignores my entire existence every time I see him. I think that that's so nice. Next, we got another NPC, not only another NPC. He's not just another NPC. In fact, he is different than every other NPC. He's a dear friend to all of us. He means everything to us, in fact. His name is Brewster. Brewster is our boy. And so at first glance, you think, I know Brewster's game. He's a pigeon. I know all I need to know about this man. He's a pigeon. And that's it. That's all I need to know. Think again, because not only is he a pigeon, he's a fancy pigeon. He's a very fancy pigeon. There are lots of different breeds of pigeon. Our boy, Brewster, the, the dreamer in all of us, Brewster, he is one of the fanciest of the pigeon types. He is a old German cropper. This is this is none other than our boy. This is Brewster. What a what a pigeon. What a bird. What a glorious, magnificent bird. The perfect bird to base one of the greatest mentors and friends I've ever had in my life on, honestly. So next up we have everybody's favorite girl, Molly. And when you look at Molly, you just know that something about this girl is special. And what's special about her is that she doesn't have crazy freaking hair like every other damn duck. What the hell happened? It was like a train that went off the rails. I say that as literally the keeper and handler of Pom Pom herself. Pom Pom is my best friend, whether I like it or not. So Pom Pom is my girl, but these ducks are out of control in Animal Crossing. And I think we can all kind of agree on that. There are so many crazy kooky ass purple, pink, orange green haired ducks okay so there's a whole kind of subgenre of crazy haired ducks and then like when the dust and glitter and blood clears from that whole mess there she is standing there looking like this it's molly bless this girl please bless and protect this girl throughout every step of her life through every single step of her journey thank you please isn't it like Something like that. Yeah. P protect this girl. Molly's a mallard, okay? She's a good old standard, lovely little mallard girl. And I love these ducks because I'm from Boston and we have like this book called Make Way for Ducklings where we're like, I don't know, it just, it took place in Boston. So we became obsessed with it because, and there's like this adorable little statue of all the ducks. If you know, you know, it's like Mrs. Mallard and Mr. Mallard and all their babies and they walk through Boston and it's like this whole little book and we love it. As soon as I saw Miss Molly Mallard, I was like, I think I knew your mom. Was your mom Mrs. Mallard? Were you make way for ducklings? Possibly, possibly. We love Molly. Don't let anything happen to this girl, please. If you have her, please assure me that she is in good hands and that you're caring for her and that she's doing well. Another bird coming in hot is Gladys. You know, if if birds in Animal Crossing were, were water park attractions, why does my brain do this? Molly would be the lazy river, you know? You just, there's nothing that's gonna go wrong with Molly. Gladys however, is a red-crowned crane. She's here to party, okay? She's the one where you got to go like this down the tube and you don't actually have fun, but you do it anyway because it's just, you know, it's just what you do. And it's like this and like people have died on it before. <laughs> I don't know. I actually don't know Gladys that well. I think she's a nice girl. What is she? Is she snooty? 
is she snooty? I just, I don't know. I look at her and I just see, I see problems because she's just so bad. She's just so, so like in a good way bad, you know? Ugh. I just looked up Gladys. That's all I looked up. I just Googled just Gladys and I got Gladys Knight, which I'm not upset about. The Empress of Soul, let me tell you. Anyway, good for her. Good for Gladys Knight. Anyway, why do I do this? I'm just like, Gladys, they'll know what I'm talking about. No, they won't, Amanda. You got to specify what you're doing. Gladys, Animal Crossing. And I just want to know if she's snooty. Is she snooty or sisterly? She is normal. This whole time, I'm over here thinking like, Gladys will come to your whole town. She'll burn it to the ground. I think I'm thinking of somebody else. <laughs> What was I thinking? She's a Capricorn. How how bad can she be? She's probably too busy making her budget to plan nefarious actions. Gladys is a good girl. I think that I have upgraded Gladys's water park ride to the one where it's for kids and you can go down in a tube with all your cousins. And it's kind of, it's got some turns and twists, but it's very safe, very oddly specific. I don't know why my brain is like this, but hopefully you get it. Anyway, the red crown crane in particular is an iconic crane. They are seen in a lot of mythology and folklore. They're seen as these symbols of nobility and prosperity and longevity. And they are also an endangered species as well. So Gladys, I'm sorry. I don't know why I thought that you were different. I thought you were different and you proved me wrong. You sure showed me, Gladys. I'm apologizing to Gladys. Main threats for the red crowned crane are just habitat loss, of course, always. It's just so sad that we're encroaching on every last ounce of this planet. And it's like we're pushing everybody off except for us. And our planet has a very delicate balance and we need the species that are here because if they're not here, then entire ecosystems will collapse and it will affect us because a lot of the things that we depend on for our economy and our money and all the stuff that we do value, a lot of that is made possible by the delicate balance of the planet. So conservation and, you know, saving species and giving them wild spaces to live is an important thing. It needs to be a priority. Thankfully, the red-crowned crane is one of the most beloved creatures in a lot of Asian cultures and they are heavily protected in those areas now. So there's a lot of breeding programs and they're making a comeback. And Gladys, again, I'm feeling guilty for thinking that you were different. So up next is another girl that I wrongly judged at one point in my life. Her name is Shari. Shari is a squirrel monkey and she's actually perfect. Look at how much she actually, when you really look at her, like I, I was always kind of confused by what was going on with the eyes. I thought it was kind of like, I don't know. She looked like one of those people that Emily Rose saw when she was getting possessed by the devil in that movie and I was kind of like a little taken aback I thought maybe I was getting possessed when I first saw her but I was getting possessed by love I just didn't know it I'm possessed by the love I have for Shari now because she's a squirrel monkey and she's a perfect rendition of a squirrel monkey and who doesn't love a squirrel monkey I mean come on she's beautiful she's perfect and she's a very specific species of monkey and we love her and we need to protect her and we need to do better. And I'm talking to myself. I'm not even talking to you guys. I'm talking to me. I need to do better. Speaking of doing better, if you can believe it, miss, I'm a zoologist. I studied animals in college. I know everything about animals. I literally had Bianca living on my island and found out like after the fact that she's a snow leopard. She is a snow leopard. Why aren't we talking about this? Why aren't we shouting it from the rooftops? Bianca is a snow leopard. Like, duh, of course she's a snow leopard. How could I have thought that she was a tiger? She wears the stripes. Where's the stripes? What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Of course she's a snow leopard. This is very embarrassing for me, but snow leopards are one of my favorite big cats of all time. They are gorgeous. They're so cute and playful. They have the weirdest, longest tail. It's too long and I love it. And they're so fascinating. They literally live like on the sides of snowy mountains in Mongolia. They're just the coolest. I love them so much. And Bianca herself, I had no idea. I was living mere steps away from an actual snow leopard. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. I would not blame you if you, if you just unsubscribe. 
knowing that. However, I am compelled to tell you that this is going to be a big theme. And I don't even think that it's like a thing that Animal Crossing tried to do. I think that just our planet is is falling apart. And we're actually in the midst of a sixth mass extinction event right now. And species are going extinct at a rate of a thousand times faster than they, uh, than they normally do. So the snow leopard is listed as vulnerable to extinction by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. There are only about 10,000 individuals in the wild, which sounds like a lot but it's really, really not. Usually populations are made up of millions of animals, so that's critically low. And their main threats are poaching, habitat loss, and just persecution from people who think that they're hunting their livestock. So we just, we have to protect the environment and the planet. Otherwise, we will lose amazing, amazing, beautiful species like the snow leopard. You gotta love them. You gotta love them. I encourage everybody who loves animals to pick just a few species that you love and that you follow their like conservation efforts. And if you ever have like a birthday fundraiser or you ever have like extra money or you ever win the lottery that you just like, you know, donate whenever you can to those efforts because they really, really need help. Conservation is a very underfunded field i would certainly know because i have like six jobs in addition to my my work as a conservationist so so that's why i appreciate youtube so much you guys are literally keeping me afloat and allowing me to continue to do the work that i love to do and that is so necessary anyway Good old Bianca. She's a wonderful advocate for her species. We love to see it. Next, we have a king, an underappreciated king. And I think it's it's actually very, it's, it's very reassuring and exciting to me that most people know what Dr. Shrunk is. He's an axolotl. Axolotls are amazing. And I know that Dr. Shrunk is, you know, his, his design is a little bit, I mean, you know, I don't have to say it. We all know. I love him though. I love him because he's an axolotl. He is a albino axolotl. And so axolotls in the wild, if there were any, because there's none, they're actually extinct in the wild, technically fundamentally extinct in the wild. Surprise, surprise. However, they're doing so well in human care. They're booming. Their populations are absolutely booming. They're actually a very common creature to see in the pet trade. So that's really interesting that they're actually like extinct in the wild right now but then they're never going to actually go extinct because people breed them everywhere all the time they're in zoos they're in aquariums people have them as pets they're all over the place so they're not actually ever going to go extinct however right now we just can't bring them back to the wild because axolotls only live in one lake in the world it's called lake xochimilco it's in mexico and it's just a very touristy lake it's highly traveled and it's just highly polluted and amphibians have really sensitive skin. So anytime there's pollution, they're the first to go. They're the first to feel the effects. So if you ever do find one outside or if you ever want to have one as a pet, just keep in mind that a lot of the stuff that we might have on our hands can transfer to their skin and make sure that if you're gonna be holding amphibians that you're bringing some hand sanitizer, letting your hands dry. So just so that you know, if you ever see a picture pop up of me holding an amphibian without gloves, just know that I am completely aware of how sensitive their skin is and we take all of the precautions necessary when it comes to keeping them safe. Axolotls are unexplainably incredible. They are basically, the long short of it is that they are able to regenerate not only lost tails like lizards and other salamanders, but also lost limbs and even lost parts of their brain, parts of their head, of their spine. If they have an injury, it will heal so quick and they will never ever ever scar they do not scar they're a thousand times more resistant to cancer than any other creature they are incredible and they are medical miracles and dr shrunk deserves your respect show some respect next up is ruby we gotta love ruby you can't help but notice right off the bat that ruby is not like the other girls at all she's a baby angel and she's also albino, okay? So she probably can't see that well. And she probably gets made fun of. But I love the fact that Ruby is so proud of herself. She wears literally her face on her shirt. She's like, oh, my biggest fan? Me. I love her. We could all honestly take a page out of Ruby's book. And she is an albino American rabbit, which is just kind of your standard, typical domestic rabbit. Then we've got Boots. 
I love boots. And part of the reason I love boots is because I'm obviously a huge fan of reptiles. So I love crocodilians. Boots is kind of a mess. You know, he's like this weird little jester boy. He's like a little clown, which is troubling, but he's also just green. So he's your typical alligator. And I would always, I consider him an American alligator. And so if you've ever wondered, here's your opportunity to learn the difference between an alligator and a crocodile. Even though crocodilia, crocodilians, is, are an entire order of reptiles, there are actually only 24 species of them. And out of the 24 species of crocodilians, only two are considered alligators. And then, of course, they get even, even more specific. You've got your gharials and your caiman. The best way to tell an alligator from a crocodile is their head shape. So if you look at an alligator, they're going to have a really round snout. So the alligator has a really, really round snout, whereas the crocodiles have a very triangular head and snout. Their snout is always going to kind of come to a point. In case you were wondering, maybe you weren't. You probably weren't. Animal Crossing dared to dream with Annabelle because Annabelle is a pangolin a pangolin. We have been blessed with a pangolin villager and you guys don't seem to uh, appreciate that as much as you should because pangolins are so amazing. A lot of people used to think way back before they really narrowed down the genetics that they were pretty closely related to anteaters and, and aardvarks, but they're actually really not. They're like their own thing. They're mammals, but they have these like keratin scales, almost like a reptile. They do love to eat ants. They get the long snout uh, and you can see those little scales pretty well on Miss Annabelle. There are only eight species of pangolin left in the world and out of all eight, Eight of them, four of them, 50% are critically endangered. They're on the brink of extinction and the other four are vulnerable to extinction. So they're not doing well because they're super, super highly trafficked and poached, mostly for unfortunately, traditional medicine, which is a whole another thing I could go on and on about. Too long didn't read. A lot of the time, traditional medicine is vulnerable groups of people being preyed on by very selfish people. And the blame needs to be put on the selfish people who are trafficking the animals, not the vulnerable people who might not have access to the same kind of education that we have access to that are buying pangolin scales because they think it's going to help cure their child's cancer. Pangolins are one of the many animals that are very heavily trafficked for this reason. And so the best thing we can do is just know about them because most people in the world just don't even know what a pangolin is. Know about them and then know more than anything that their scales have no medicinal quality whatsoever. They do nothing. And, you know, the more people we can, we can tell that to, the better they can do. And there has been incredible leaps and bounds in just the last decade on educating people and getting people to start start really seeing traditional medicine for what it is. So I have a lot of hope for the future, but of course, pangolins are in very critical need of, of help. So, you know, anytime that you can teach somebody about pangolins or just throw a little bit of respect their way, the more we can educate people, the more we can help to combat poaching. Next up, we have our boy. I guess I can't call him our boy. That's weird. He's not a boy. He's a man and his name is Dobie. How could you not love Dobie? He's elderly and he's wrinkly and he's in need of help across the street. And we love him and we're all willing to help him across the street every time, every damn time. I don't even care how long it takes. I will walk him across the street every time. So although Dobie might just look like your average elderly wolf, when I first looked at Dobie, I was like, huh, I'm getting Mexican wolf vibes from Dobie. How cool. And then I've seen it all around that, you know, in multiple places I've read that that Dobie is, is uh, you know, thought to be a Mexican wolf. And I hope it's not getting annoying. It is definitely annoying to me, but in a way that's like, you know, it's annoying, but I'm not going to not mention it because you guessed it, the Mexican wolf is endangered. Of course, they are a subspecies of the gray wolf. Wolves in general are uh, are definitely not doing well. They are highly persecuted and they've been just driven to the edge due to not only persecution from humans based on what farmers think they're doing to their to their livestock and also of course habitat destruction so mexican wolves are in need of help as well and our man doby is out here representing and we love to see endangered species on the forefront because the best way to get people to care is to show them and educate them and i love to see it 
Next, we've got we got a couple different little birdies. There are actually 43 different species of sparrows in the world, and we got two. Of course, we got our boy Sparrow, who has to be a sparrow. He's a house sparrow. And then we've got Peck, Mr. Peck. He's very uh he's very unique. And he is a Java sparrow. So we got a couple sparrows out there killing it, of course. And then we have yet another one of my precious, beautiful girls, Lily. Can you believe it? Lily is more than meets the eye. She's got red eyes. Hello. She's got to be a red-eyed tree frog, right? Why else would they make her eyes red? And then, of course, we've got a couple of beloved eagles. First and foremost, Apollo. We all know that Apollo is a bald eagle. And then we got Buzz over here as well. Buzz is a golden eagle, which is another really cool species of raptor. We love to see it. We love to see them out there doing their raptor thing. When I see Agnes, I see a beautiful, unique girl. And I also see either a pot belly pig or Berkshire pig vibes. Let's talk about Whitney. What's going on with Whitney? Because A, Whitney is obviously a wolf and she's killing it as a wolf. She's white. So first glance, you're thinking, okay, Arctic wolf. Love it. However, I'll have you know, this might be startling information for you, but blue eyes is not a gene that wolves carry. They don't technically have blue eyes unless they are hybridizing with huskies. In particular, huskies carry the blue eye gene quite heavily as people probably can imagine. And so a part of me, the, the animal nerd part of me wants to be like, yo, Whitney is not what she seems. I think Whitney's like, Whitney's got like the Balto thing going on. During a villager hunt, I called Whitney Balto's mom. But I think that she is actually Balto. She was Balto the whole time. Cause she's got to be like half wolf, half husky. It's just something to think on, something to, sh something to chew on. Speaking of something to chew on, just kidding. Why would I ever say that? We're not chewing on any of these creatures. We love them. Savannah. We're never going to chew on Savannah. Don't chew on Savannah at any point. Savannah's a zebra. We love her. We love to see her. I mean, wh what more do I have to say about zebras that hasn't already been said? They make a great noise. They make a great friend. Zebras are actually, they can be kind of be kind of feisty actually i think a lot of people saw that movie racing stripes actually i don't think a lot of people did did you see that movie i remember seeing it when i was a kid and i, I was a horse girl growing up so i remember watching that movie and being like <laughs> okay because that wouldn't happen ever obviously i don't know why i feel like i have to tell you did you guys know that a zebra could never be a racehorse obviously it's a friggin' movie amanda but anyway zebras are not just gonna be like your tip they're not just like gonna be like yeah i can be a horse sure they're a wild animal speaking of zebras we have to talk about pappy i'm talking to you my beautiful okapi this is my okapi i don't want to like ruin my whole animal horde over here but this is my beautiful okapi one of my favorite animals of all time if you ever wanted to know what my response to seeing an okapi for the first time was here here it is oh my god Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, so that was a significant moment in my life. It was a turning point in my life, actually. Oh, copies are amazing animals. And I just couldn't believe that Animal Crossing went there. You know, not only am I reeling over the fact that they went there with Annabelle, they did the pangolin thing, but they did the oh, copy thing too. I can't believe it. Oh, copies are so wacky. They're topsy-turvy. There's nothing about this animal that computes right in your brain. You think like, is something up? Like, what is, what am I seeing right now? Is this like a weird cursed image? No, it's no copy. In fact, for the longest time, the Western world, of course, people, you know, who shared their habitat in Africa knew that these animals existed, but people in, in the Western world didn't believe that they existed and thought that they were cryptids. So a cryptid being an animal that is said to exist by accounts, but has not been proven by science to exist. So when you think of a cryptid, you think of Mothman, who's my fave, and Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. These animals are so kooky and weird that they were literally put in the same category as Bigfoot. Can you believe? And the Mothman, they're like, you know, the Mothman, the man moth, might actually exist. That okapi though, hell nah. They're not as closely related as you would think to the zebra. Their closest relative is the giraffe. Pretty cool stuff. So we love Pappy. And the more I talk about okapis, the more I want Pappy. I want Pappy. I actually kind of want Pappy. We've got Hopper. Oh, Hopper. 
Hopper's a rockhopper penguin, and probably a northern or a southern rockhopper penguin. Some people say he's a macaroni penguin. You know what? They're all crested penguins. There's a whole bunch of little crested penguins out there, and if you want to call Hopper a macaroni penguin, go right ahead. I'm going to call him a rockhopper penguin because his name's Hopper, and I like things to be just, like, neat. Robin is a robin, and then we have grizzly, and if you can believe it, grizzly is a grizzly bear. We gotta do what makes us happy, and that's why we gotta talk about our boy, Leaf. Leaf is a three-toed sloth. I love sloths so much, even though they're a lot, like, they can be a lot meaner than I thought. The first time I ever met a sloth, she was like a little baby, but she like grabbed me and like was gonna bite my nose. And I was like, I didn't expect this from my first sloth. Are you kidding me? You're gonna bite my nose? I thought that you were trying to focus on breathing. They're a little bit more feisty than you would think. But then the adults, I think they really chill out and they're just kind of like, what up? Gotta love a sloth. I don't know anybody who doesn't like a sloth. Are you kidding me? And Leaf, our boy? I mean, first time I saw Leaf, I was kind of like, <sighs> I kind of felt like I needed to flee a little bit because he's just He's jarring. He's a jarring sight to behold at first. But then you realize, oh my God, he's no monster. He was sent here to save us and give us plants. We can't we can't discredit that. Monty, at first I thought he looked like a zombie, but then I was like, no, there has to be something. Why would they make him look like that? He looks like a zombie. Why is his skin blue? Does he need CPR? Is he is he able to breathe? But then I realized, no, he's able to breathe just fine. He's just a snub-nosed snow monkey, which is like a little blue-faced monkey that we think is really cute. Then there's our boy Blathers. Blathers. What is Blathers? He's an owl, of course. I've never seen it confirmed, so I have two guesses as to what Blathers might be. And of course, this this concerns Celeste as well. But Blathers has got these beautiful little horns. So he's, in my opinion, he's probably a great horned owl or a Eurasian eagle owl. I have a I have a little like a fan spin headcanon thing for Flick as well. So Flick, as we know, is a chameleon, but is he? I'm not sure. I'm not so sure. Because when you look at all the different chameleons that are red or that can be red, you just start seeing, I don't know, for me, I'm not seeing Flick. He doesn't have the chameleon eyes. Whereas Nat, our, our first chameleon that we had that for whatever reason wasn't good enough, even though, I mean, I'm not complaining about Flick at all. I just don't know where Nat went and I'm concerned about him. I liked Nat. I wish that Nat would just also come. I think that I the more the merrier, especially when it comes to reptiles. But anyway, Nat was of course a chameleon. There's no debating it. He had the amazing the, the eyes, which are like quintessential chameleon. It's what makes the chameleon. Flick makes me suspicious. He's got what looks to be a prehensile tail, but he ha doesn't have the chameleon eyes. So is he masquerading as a chameleon? What is Flick other than the hero that we all need and deserve? Flick, in my opinion, as a huge herpetology nerd and literal herpetologist, is a horned tree agamid. I mean, look at this guy. He's got the spikes. He's got the eyes. He's got the color. And he looks cool doing it. And so I feel like, hmm, maybe that's Flick. When I see Ike and I see his facial pattern, maybe it's just his thing or maybe he's a sloth bear. I love sloth bears. So any excuse to insert a sloth bear into anything, I'm going to take it. Same with Henry. I believe that Henry has got to be an American bullfrog, one of my favorite animals of all time. I'll keep it brief because I could talk about him forever, but I had an American bullfrog that I rescued from an Asian market. If you ever see a frog or a turtle or anything in an Asian market, by the way, and you feel like rescuing it, do not ever release them into the wild. They are vectors for so many diseases and releasing just one frog or one turtle from an Asian market into the wild can decimate an entire population, just to let you know. It's it's a very, very compassionate, lovely thing to do. Of course, as always, your intentions are good, but releasing anything into the wild that isn't wild, whether it's a pet or an animal that you're trying to save, is a no-no, unfortunately, because while you might be saving that one, you might kill literally an entire population with the new diseases that they could bring in. So anyway, with that being said, as much as I wanted to save them all, I knew I could only care for probably just one because they're a pretty big frog and I know that they need a lot of space. So I picked the one that seemed the most feisty, that had the most fight in him, and that was my Kikoman, and he was a wonderful 
wonderful guy. He lived for four years, which unfortunately is average for a farmed bullfrog because in the wild, bullfrogs can take up to two years to go through metamorphosis, which is like crazy to think about. So they're slow to grow, but then they can live 10 years or so. Whereas the farmed bullfrogs, unfortunately, like most farmed animals, are injected with a bunch of hormones and they're forced to grow as fast as possible. And that significantly reduces their lifespan. But keep them on my little bullfrog that I got from the market that was almost food. He had a wonderful life. He actually ended up being an animal actor. He was in two different TV shows. He was just the best. He had the best personality of any frog I've ever met. And I've met a lot of frogs in my life. He was just very special and he meant the world to me. And I'm so glad to have known him. Definitely planning once the whole thing with the thing out there is over to get a tattoo of him because I love him. Anyway, so yeah, that's why I love Henry too. Henry is my boy. I have never seen Henry on any of my hunts. Where the hell is Henry? He's so underrated. Let me know if you got Henry. Is Henry like one of the best frogs? Come on. I mean, I know I got Lily and I'm not complaining, but where is Henry? Let me know that Henry's okay if you have him because I'm concerned and I love him. So Pee Wee, gotta love Pee Wee. He is your beautiful standard issue, typical lowland gorilla, probably a western lowland gorilla, probably a silverback. Also highly, highly endangered. God, we've got to get our shit together. I'm telling you. Ralt, is he not a little blue penguin? He's got to be a little blue penguin, right? He's little, he's blue, and he's a penguin. Hello, he's a little blue penguin. Master Frillard is obviously a frilled lizard, another Australian baddie. We've got another antelope on our hands. And this one is a springbok antelope. And the springbok antelope, you're probably seeing a resemblance to our boy Lopez. That's right, Lopez is a springbok antelope. He's so handsome. And he's just another one of our beloved antelope boys. What a character Cranston is. I love him. Every time I see him on one of my hunts, I'm like, what's up, Cranston? How you been? How you been, Cranston? He's got this crazy thing going on because he's a crested ibis. That's his crest. He's a wonderful, beautiful crested ibis. And I love the attention to like, you know, this is definitely a crested ibis. And I just love that for him. Cranston. Honestly, if I ever have the money, I'm I love cows. I'm I'm obsessed with cows. Cows are one of my favorite just things in the world. Cows cure my depression. They every time I see a cow, I'm filled like with it's like I don't know. It's just it has like this physical response. I just how could you not look at a cow and feel spiritually connected to them when you look in their eyes? I just love cows. So if I ever have the money, I'm totally having like a rescue ranch. Obviously, look at me. And I just want so many cows. I just want to rescue all the cows because they're just so sweet. They're just such gentle creatures. I just love cows. So we're not going to talk about how Angus is beef, you know, because he's not. He's a citizen of our community. And he's also, you know, that's the type of cow or bull he is. He's a brown Angus. And we are not going to be eating him today or tomorrow or the next day. We're not. He's a part of our community. Sahara. Let's talk about Sahara, the androgynous icon, Sahara, because we can't figure out if Sahara is male or female. And you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad we can't because they are just Sahara and we love to see it. From what I've read, Sahara is like referred to with she, her pronouns in like the United States, but then in like Japan, they're referred to with he, him pronouns, non-binary icon. We love to see it. I don't know what else to tell you. We love to see it. And they are a dromedary camel, which is the one that has like just the one hump, clearly. And yeah, Sahara's awesome. They've got like the eyelashes. And just because they've got the eyelashes doesn't make them female because camels actually have really long eyelashes to help keep sand out of their eyes during like big sandstorms and stuff. Wade, let's talk about Wade because I just realized today that Wade is a emperor penguin chick, right? He's an emperor penguin chick. How old is Wade? Where are Wade's parents? Are you taking care of Wade? Are you bringing him to preschool every day? These are questions that don't have answers for me right now and my heart is racing. I'm worried about Wade. But yeah, I, I don't know how I didn't notice that Wade is clearly 
an emperor penguin chick because he's got the down feathers and he's adorable. He's got like the grayish brownish, like he's got like the gray and black, like very blended hues. Someday he's going to be bigger than all of us. If that's his size as a chick, he's going to be a big, big, big bitch. And we're all going to have to get out of his way. When he grows up, when he fledges into his adult feathers, Wade is going to be unstoppable. We need to brace ourselves for Wade's metamorphosis, okay? If he's that big as a chick, I'm praying for y'all. If you got Wade, I'm just kidding. Wade is so cute. I love him. Are you kidding me? Remember we talked about Molly? Now let's talk about Drake. He's a boy mallard. So they're cute. Katrina. Let's talk about Katrina for a second. Obviously a panther, but did you know that the panther is not actually a thing? Panthers are just a melanistic jaguar or leopard. So jaguars and leopards, uh, jaguars are from South America and Central America, and then leopards are from Africa and Asia. And both of these types of big cats can have a melanistic phase, which is like a genetic kind of mutation or morph that makes them, uh, makes it so that it's kind of like the opposite of albino, where instead of having no melanin, they have all the melanin. And it makes them this gorgeous, beautiful, like pitch black. Oh, is there anything more gorgeous than a panther? Come on. So yeah, Katrina is a gorgeous, beautiful panther, which is technically either a melanistic jaguar or a melanistic leopard. And she's a queen. Where the hell is she? I need her now more than ever. I need her to teach me how to wield my powers. Come on, Katrina. Look at this. I got this. I always remember that. Every time, since the first time she told me that, it hit close to home. Katrina, I'm thinking about you every day. I will obviously link the Etsy shop that I got this because it's obviously perfect. We're thinking of you, Katrina. You know, I have my suspicions about Simon, but he's got to be a rhesus macaque. You know, he's got the little, the little red face. He's a rhesus macaque. Come on. I think that Lyle and Lottie... What a mess Lyle was. I hope he's okay. God, he seems like the type that wouldn't be. He like almost went off the deep end there. I don't know. Lyle, Lyle, Lyle. Anyway, Lyle and Lottie, I feel like they're giant river otters. And of course, we got Pascal, who is also an otter, but he's a sea otter. Tell me if you see it. No pun intended. Actually, that pun, of course, was intended. And then, of course, we've got our queen, Flora. Are you kidding me? Flora is a flamingo, obviously. She's the flamingo, the only flamingo we're ever going to get, and we love her for it. Of course, Twiggy, you know that Twiggy's got to be a budgie. Jay is a barn swallow. So now you know. Now you know, and now you can treat him as such with that information. And then we've got Dottie. Dottie is our Dutch rabbit queen. Patty, our Jersey cow princess. Flurry, our girl Flurry is not Voldemort, nor is she working for Voldemort. She's actually a winter white dwarf hamster. Then we have Deirdre. I've never heard anything about what Deirdre is other than just a deer. However, you know, we've got Fauna. We know that Fauna is like, you know, a, a fawn, but she also just seems kind of like your standard, like typical white-tailed deer, whereas Deirdre gives me red brocket deer vibes. I actually met a red brocket deer while I was in the Amazon. They just got that face. You know, Deirdre just has that like beautiful, like contoured face. And I feel like red brocket deer have that vibe. So that's what she is in my head canon. Then we've got Amelia. Amelia is actually not only a queen, she's also a crested caracara, which is a type of bird of prey. And then we've got Audie and Chief. Let's just talk briefly about Audie and Chief because they've always given me fox vibes. What the hell is going on? You know, foxes are our canids. So, you know, it's just like giving a African painted dog, one of the wolf spots, giving it to two foxes. Audie and Chief, though, shipping it, are we? Yes, duh. Ah, uh, hello. Let's talk about Julia for a second because Julia obviously is a peacock, but male peacocks are the ones that are the vibrant colors. Then there's the peahen, which is just a dull brown color. What I'm saying is that Julia is a trans icon and that's all there is to it. Ooh, we got Rolf. Okay, so Rolf is a white tiger. However, did you know that white tigers are not a species? They're not like a thing that normally happens. They're a genetic mutation 
In fact, white tigers are so heavily bred to be white because they're beautiful that a lot of white tigers have a lot of issues. And it's really, really sad. So you can see like the little pink on Rolf's eyes. And a lot of the time, again, white tigers have neurological issues or they have bad vision or they have, you know, hearing loss and different disabilities like that based on just their, their genetics. I love Rolf so much and I hope he's doing okay. Just Take, take care of them. Take good care of them. And don't ever buy a white tiger, obviously. Don't buy ever any tiger anywhere ever under any circumstances. Eric, obviously. Eric is our moose king. He's got to be a moose. I love moose. Moose are so cute. When they're in rut, which is their like mating season, do not mess with a moose. They'll get crunched. Not with their mouth, but they'll crunch you. They'll find a way. I saved him for last because I just... You guys know how I feel about Wart Jr. He's a toad, which is insulting to all the great toads that I've loved in my life. I'm not even going to assign him a species because I don't want to bring any toads into this. I don't want to like throw shade at any actual good toads out there. Give me your case for Wart Jr. I would love to see it. The experiences that I've had with Wart Jr. have been nothing but negative. I don't just hate him because he's, listen, I love toads. I love toads. I'm a toad loving gal. Everything in me was predestined to love and accept Wart Jr., but he laughs at me. Every time I see him, he's smirking at me. He laughs at me. He comes around from something. I swear to God, every time I see Wart Jr., it's like this. He's like, <clears throat> And he's got that little smirk. I just want to slap it off his face. And I'm too self-conscious for him because every time I see him, he comes around a corner and he's already laughing at me and smirking at me. What the f Who does that? Like, I'm the type of person where if I hear people laughing like three aisles over when I'm at the store, I start freaking out. I'm like, they're laughing at me. They're laughing at me. Is there something on my face? Like, is there, am I wearing something stupid? <laughs> Why are they laughing at me? They're not laughing at me. But Wart Jr. plays into my social anxiety so hard. He's just always got this little smirk on his face. I just would love to know what he's smirking about, you know? If it's an inside joke, if he's just thinking of something funny. What's so funny? What's so funny, Wart Jr.? Why is he always... He's like... <laughs> he's just always smirking. And I can't handle it. I can't handle it. And every time I see him... My rage just grows and grows and grows. It's like every time I see him as another chaos emerald and I'm chaos and eventually I'm just going to lose my shit on him. Make your case for Wart Jr., please. I would love to know what is so funny. That's my list. Comment down below if you have any other ones that I missed because I'm sure that I've missed some. Uh, and... You know, that was just kind of the ones that really stand out to me. So I'm sure that there's others. I would love to know which ones that you either have noticed or that you have in your head that you consider them this or that or something else. Uh, let me know if there's any villagers out there that you thought were something else that I thought that they were something else. Let's just talk about it because I love talking about animals. So I hope that this kept you thoroughly entertained. And again, Please let me know why War Jr. thinks that I'm so funny because it's starting to really weigh on me. Why is he laughing at me? What did I do?